talked about about what's going on at our Texas Capitol today. We started a ridiculous voucher session today where Republicans want to benefit 160,000 kids and, and screw over the next, the other 4.8 million kids. We, um, I'm from San Antonio. I represent a district that starts in San Antonio, goes all the way to West Texas to Big Bend. Do you guys know where that is? No. I'm sorry, I'm getting my back. Uh, well, Big Bend, and, and in the middle of that, I have Uvalde. And so, with everything that's wrong with our state right now, with everything that we are seeing right now at the hands of these Republicans, I'll tell you, it, it's it's hard to to, it's almost laughable, but the fact is, it's it's really sad. Because these people are fighting absolutely a culture war, but their culture war has turned into a war of ideas that's killing our kids. And you saw what happened in Uvalde, Texas, which is right in the middle of my district. And it's killing women when it comes to reproductive rights. Imagine this, in one year, we have the highest rate uh, of mortality deaths with women that are pregnant in this state. Can you imagine that? And that's because of their crazy laws on or against reproductive rights for women. We have got to do something in our state because we are broken. I was in Uvalde when, when all of those kids passed on. Um, I spent months and weeks there. I tried to fight and push back for some accountability from this state, from the Department of Public Safety. I was talking to Stacy just now, who's in law enforcement. You know, the cops waited out there for 77 minutes. You all know that. You've seen it. Um, I've seen every bit of that body cam footage that happened inside that room. And it's what inspired me to run for this next role in my life. I'm an immigration lawyer. I'm 53 years old. I don't need to go to Washington to the United States Senate. But what happened there was unconscionable. And more kids died that didn't need to have to die because we have a Department of Public Safety that's broken and we have a governor that's never asked for change or accountability in that depart Department of Public Safety. And we have a man like Ted Cruz that won't do anything on, on common sense gun safety solutions. Listen, I'm, I'm from South Texas. I own a bunch of guns. I don't own an AR-15 and I don't need one. Uh, but how in the world you're gonna let an 18 year old young man go buy an AR-15 on one day, go buy 900 rounds of ammunition, and then another AR-15 on day three, and somehow that is not considered a significant event in our country. Uh, it's just uncalled for. So we need to absolutely raise the age limit on accessing this type of gun. We need to absolutely have extreme risk protective orders. When you see that kind of craziness, someone says, well, this, does, this isn't right, and so we need to call the police, and we need to close the gun show loophole and have universal background checks. And so in all of that, that's how all of this began. But even before Uvalde, Texas is, was broken, and it's been broken. 800 people died in a winter storm in 2021 when it got a little bit cold. And they died because Republicans that leave this state care more about a dollar than they care about people. We have a broken electrical grid infrastructure system that no one at the, at the Capitol, Austin, that's controlling this building even cares to fix in a right way. They just care about the bottom line. We have a health care system in this state where working class families that are making about $48,000 a year, you don't come in, $48,000 a year have to go out of pocket about twenty, about twelve thousand five hundred dollars, twenty-five percent of their income in out-of-pocket health care costs. How does that even make sense in our nation when a, when a working-class family has to struggle this hard? It shouldn't be this hard. So these are real things that we have to talk about in our state and in our country. And so that's why I'm running because we need to have a discussion honestly about Medicare for all because it works. It works. And you have to go out and make a decision. First, you have to make a decision in a primary, and then you have to, well, the general's easy. Come on, it's Ted Cruz. We're going to beat that guy. Um, but you have to make a decision of who you're going to send up to. And you've got one candidate that talks about bipartisanship as if it was real. 
There's no more bipartisanship in this country. We are broken. We need to take our state back and we need to win. No ands, ifs, or buts because these people are leading us into the ground. They're taking our educational system and poor, poor boying us to no end. And the thing that they want to talk about every day, and we don't have as much time as I spend with you talking about immigration, these Republicans talk about day in and day out about a broken immigration system. And yeah, we have a broken immigration system, but go fix it. My opponent in this primary right now, last week came out for Trump's border. That is unconscionable. It's a ridiculous solution. It's a 12th century solution to a 20th century problem. You're gonna see very soon in my campaign, we're going to talk about comprehensive immigration reform, the kind of immigration reform where we fix, where we take people off the border, have an in-country program where they're applying for a job at the American consulate and going through the Department of Labor, applying for a job in Omaha, Nebraska, or upstate New York, or even here in Texas. They're gonna get a work permit and travel permit into this country along with travel pay. We can absorb 30 million jobs that Americans don't want to work in. When we do this, we will be able to bolster our social security system and bolster our economy in a right way. We need people in Washington that are gonna be very serious about these things. You can't have people that are talking about building Trump's wall. Because it won't work. It won't work. And so if that's his idea of bipartisanship, then I'm sorry, we're not there. These people are killing us. When the, when the people that come to you that want to serve as your next senator, when the Democrats come to you, and there are many, and they ask you how you feel about an assault weapons ban, you need to tell them, we need to have an assault weapons ban because we need to do it. This AR-15, I want you to understand this. This is the rifle that was, the, it's, it's, the, pre, it's the, the rifle that was created for Vietnam. It's the original M16. It fires three times the speed of any other rifle. This young man used full metal jacket bullets that destroyed these little babies. How in the world can we have that in our, in our society today in the hands of civilians? We need to have that discussion. And there's nobody in this race other than me that's arguing for an assault weapons ban. You need, they need to be very clear. You need to ask them exactly how they feel about that. You need to ask them how they feel on reproductive rights about expanding the Supreme Court. You know how we got to nine Supreme Court justices? Does anybody know? Anybody? How do we get to nine? From the Constitution. Nope. Oh, yeah. But we are. We are expanded. It was 1864, 1868. In 1868, guess what? We had nine circuits. We had expanded from like five. And so. We went up to nine circuits. Do you know how many circuits we now have in the United States? 13. And so when people tell you, oh no, that's you can't talk about expanding the Supreme Court, you're gonna put a target on your back. We must ensure that we protect women's reproductive rights, no ands, ifs, or buts. <clears throat> and any Democrat coming to you needs to make sure that we defend ourselves against the tyranny that's happening from these Republicans. We need to talk about breaking this filibuster that we have. Let me tell you why this seat is so important. We are being held hostage by a guy named Joe Manchin. And Joe Manchin will not break the filibuster on common safe gun safety solutions. He won't break the filibuster on electoral issues, and he won't break the, the filibuster on reproductive rights for women. That's how important this seat is. And that is why we must win. And so I'm guessing my time's about to run out here. <laughs> I think we've covered all the important things, but give me, let me just tell you, give me another 30 seconds. And I was gonna give you a couple minutes for questions because I just noticed we only have about five candidates here, so we can- well, I, And I appreciate you letting me go first. Mom wants me to get home to the kids, so I got, <laughs> I've got two beautiful daughters, 16 and 14. And boy, I'm having to deal with boyfriends now. It's, it kills me. Uh, but but here's the thing. We have to do something. I know you're all going to vote because you're here because you care. But this is so much bigger than all than each and every one of us. It's so much bigger than me. You have to get find some kid, two kids, three kids, or or 
a 40 year old or whatever person you know that tells you, oh, government doesn't matter. Politicians don't matter. They only care about themselves. No, my vote's not going to make a difference because nothing gets done. And you're going to tell them because you didn't vote. 19 kids and two teachers died. Absolutely. Because these people didn't vote in this state. We have allowed these people to screw us on education, on health care, on guns, you name it, on reproductive rights. And kids are dying and women are dying because of the decisions that we allow them to make. And that we allow Ted Cruz to change. And we have to deal like and I'm sorry, I think and we have to deal with bastards like Ken Paxton and Dan Patrick and Greg Abbott and Ted Cruz. And they wouldn't care about us if we were on fire. And our nation right now is on fire. Is on fire. And we've got people talking about bipartisanship. Now we've got to take over. We've got to win. Because they treat it like war. I promise you, their game theory is war theory. And we must do the same to win and bring back decency and civility back to our nation. We are a great nation of people that care about each other, but we have a lot of bunch of people that, that hate us and that hate others. And that's not what this country is made of. I'm going to fight for you in the United States Senate, and I look forward to doing that. But we need more people. We had a great guy named Metro O'Rourke that ran. He took him to 200,000 other people, 200,000 votes. That's why you need to work on bringing out new voters because we're that close and we're going to make this thing happen. Thank you very much. I appreciate you so much. My name is Roland Gugetta. Does anyone have a question for the Senator Cruz? Yes, Senator Cruz. Thank anybody's guns away. I think that we need to have a ban on assault rifles like we did before. We're the only leading nation in the world that has these types of guns available to its citizenry. And look at what's happening. They're killing us. Their loose gun laws are killing us. We don't go to the mall the same way. We don't go to church the same way. We don't go anywhere the same way without anxiety. You've got people walking around this state with handguns on their on their on their hips, and you don't know if they're the good guys or the bad guys because of their loose gun laws. All we want is to have some common sense gun safety solutions on those three measures that I spoke of. And yes, we should absolutely talk about an assault weapons ban. And any Democrat that comes in here should say, yes, we need an assault weapons ban. I'll tell you why. Because I saw what it did to those little children. I saw every bit of it, and I wasn't right for a long time. Um, it's the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. And I don't want to talk about it because I'll spoil your dinner. I will talk about this for the rest of my life, and I will fight to get that assault weapons ban again. Because during those 10 years, we were safe and we were secure. These things did not happen. By the way, we're arming the Mexican cartels like you can't believe with these things. Just so you know, we produce four million of these things every year. Two million of them end up in Mexico in the hands of Mexican cartels. I mean, we, we, we could go on forever and a day. We're, this campaign is important because it's about the issues that matter most to people. We're gonna talk about free college for kids and I'm gonna show you how we can pay for it. So check out our campaign at RolandForTexas.com. We're going to be able to pay for that with a 10 year going forward tax deduction. With every bit that they pay towards their loans, 100% deductible. So that they can invest in a condo and invest in a car and stimulate our economy in the right way. We can do these things. I mean, they're, they're, they're there. This isn't some fantasy I've drummed up in my head. The problem is nobody in Washington wants to do anything. And I've done amazing things in that building over the last 18 years. I created the uh, 
Farmer Suicide Prevention Act against their wishes. And Sid Miller, I did it on an amendment in 21, and Sid Miller got in the committee this year and he said, because of the Uteris Amendment, we saved 61 lives. You didn't know this, but farmers have the highest incidence of suicide in the nation. The rest of that bill that they didn't want, that they took out, that I couldn't put into that amendment, had a microloan program. Every state that's had a microloan program has had it to success, and they've made money. By the way, every state that's ever had a voucher program for schools, every one of them has failed, period. Every state that's had a voucher student program for its kids has failed. And so we could talk about every problem that we're facing in this country as a solution, but you need to send up people that want to fight and make sure that we get things done for the American people. And we, we stay out of this crap of blaming each other. And, 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 and lately some of this crap thinking that we're all gonna just you know, go down this road and hand in hand Republicans and Democrats. We've got to change what's happening up there right now because we are on fire in this nation. And they have, they have split us up so badly. And those poor rural Texans, they consider themselves Republicans. They're getting screwed the worst. No health care, no mental health care, no access to, no emergency management whatsoever. No access to real resources. And these old boys think that they're Republicans. So we're gonna talk to them all. We're gonna, we've been to them all over the state. I'm sorry, I have a long answer to your question. I apologize. <laughs> I wanna thank you all. I appreciate you very much. This won't be the, 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 the first time you see me. Uh, it won't be the last time you see me, rather. Uh, please take a pen. Go to Rolling for Texas. Go to our information kiosk. See what we're, we're talking about. We're going to roll out our immigration plan this week. We'll be rolling out some different issues over the course of the next several weeks. And we're going to go travel around Texas and talk to people about what's right. I want to tell them the truth. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I've known you since I was a precinct chair. I mean, uh, I started these Travis County Democrats, you know, Bonnie Crown. So I've got them taking this statewide now. Baker, I'm at the third court of appeals place five.